So I managed to get my grubby hands on the OLED switch a little bit ahead of launch. It's not the white one, but it'll make do. My immediate impressions are, oh boy, that screen is thick. It's ever so slightly brighter than the last switch that I had, which is the Mario Edition switch. And I noticed the Animal Crossing switch looks a little cool. The Mario switch looks a little warm. And the new OLED switch looks a little green. I mean, they all look great. It's, it's not really a problem. I'm just, you know, I'm over here analyzing it because it's my damn job. I don't know if it's because this is like a new product that I just took out of the box, but like even the plastic looks nicer. Everything looks like it's tighter. The power button is, is like sleeker looking. The old switch used to break up here at the little vent hole. It had some weak plastic around here. This looks like they addressed that issue a little bit. Kevin mentioned this to me in a podcast we did. He said the Joy-Con rails felt tighter, and they really do, but it slides in nicer, too. I don't think they did anything different to the rails. They look exactly the same. I just think the overall build quality is much, much better. This is a this is the mid-cycle refresh that everybody was talking about. It's just not like, you know, a PS4 Pro or anything. It's just very small changes that they realized they could make. I mean, the biggest and most eye-catching difference is that the screen takes up the whole friggin' unit, and that is much easier on the eyes. It's, it's the thing that I hated the most about the original Switch. This bezel is gross. What are we, in 2011? And also, this friction kickstand is, is incredible. I mean, I never trusted the kickstand on my old stuff. Oh, here's a fun thing to note. I already think I ruined the speaker grill. <laughs> the only way to take the kickstand out is to kind of put your fingernail in and pull it. And I put my fingernail in where the speaker, like, mesh is. That's where I nicked it. That's good. But anyway, you can you can go really wide with it. And, and, and you can have it at any, any angle that you want. This is leagues better. They didn't really change anything else about any of the internals. You're literally just getting a nicer, bigger screen. And the screen is still 720p, which is fine. And I'm sure everything looks great. I haven't gotten any games on here just yet. They're still downloading. I will have them by the end of the video. But looking at the text, it's a little disappointing. Since the screen is bigger, you can you know notice a little bit of pixels. If you try hard enough to look. I mean, if, if you're just playing a game, I'm sure it's still going to look better than the old stuff. So here's a new setting that's on this that's not on the older Switch. There's console screen colors. Setting this will not affect the colors displayed in TV mode. That's because it's for the handheld mode. You can set it to vivid or standard. It's set to vivid by default. Right now it doesn't look like it's making much of a difference, but I'm sure in a game it will. I'll be honest, standard and vivid kind of looks the same to me. Mario's hat is like less red and that's about it. So I guess if you really want to preserve the true colors of Mario's hat, you can uh, play in standard mode. Honestly, it, it, it barely makes a difference. I don't even know how much it would affect the battery life, honestly. I saw some people online saying that uh, standard was better because vivid it isn't true colors. You're playing a video game. It's not like you're, you're looking at a, a reference monitor or anything like I had a few videos back. Like that thing you get a huge amount of dynamic range. You can see every little nuance, every little detail. But these games are developed for what is essentially like a consumer tablet screen. It's playing Mario Kart 8 with true colors isn't really like the pinnacle of gaming. But I'm also curious how this stacks up with other OLEDs in other, you know, consumer handheld devices. It looks basically identical to my Google Pixel 3a. Actually, there's more color range here, but it might just be because this is a compressed YouTube video. The other thing that changed is the dock, and immediately I felt like I broke it. Because the back isn't a hinge, it kind of falls off, which I guess is better because it was really annoying to try to get all my cables in here with the back kind of hanging out. Because I, I had this thing like sandwiched between some other consoles that I have too. You have a little cable run here. You have a way for the fans to get air in and out. They made the sides glossy, which is a little weird. 
It looks as though the internals of the dock are exactly the same. The only difference is that USB you get on the inside is now a LAN port, which is probably better. Mine had a network adapter plugged in on the inside anyway. And I think we're probably better off if more people get access to LAN ports. Otherwise, not much about this has changed at all. The new switch is ever so slightly bigger long ways. So that means the dock is also ever so slightly bigger. I think 0.1 inch. It doesn't affect it at all. You can still use the old switch on the new dock. I do like this little tiny switch logo with a gloss on it. Also, I immediately noticed on the regular switch, the bezel is like glossy and then you have like the matte plastic around it. On this one, it's glossy all over, baby. Ooh, my, my game's done. There is still kind of like two bezels now on this. It looks like the screen is like window boxed. It's a very interesting look. But the gloss ends on the top and bottom because the back is completely matte or like satin, I would say. It has like a sheen to it. And then you get the little tiny Switch logo, which is different than the big fat old Switch logo. That is, that is very pretty. Yeah, this definitely looks a lot better. It's not even a problem that it's only 720p. Everything looks incredibly crisp. Oh, I'm still filming? Yeah, so I'm gonna play with this a little more and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you in a little bit. In the meantime, why don't you watch some B-roll? Ganon 3 stopped him. So I've spent a little more time playing with this thing and man, that screen really is a lot better. Like it doesn't even matter that it's not 1080p unless you're looking at like really crisp text or I can see the polygons and Byleth's hair right now, but everything else looks like pretty damn crisp. I think the fact that the screen is that much bigger contributes to most of it but also the vivid colors and, and how bright it can get. I turned auto brightness on and it's it still looks really good. To address that improved audio. They sound exactly the same. This is like slightly louder, maybe. Now, of course, the question everybody's gonna ask is if they should get it for themselves and I'd say if you don't have a Switch right now, this is probably the one you should get. I mean, it's definitely an improvement playing in portable mode. Playing in dock mode, it's gonna be exactly the same. It has all of the same internals and everything. It doesn't load games any faster. So in terms of an upgrade, it's really not gonna be that crazy. If you play a lot in portable mode, this screen might make a little bit of a difference to you, but $350 is a lot. $50 is not a lot. So if it's between the $300 Nintendo Switch or the $350 Nintendo Switch OLED model, then I'd say definitely go for the OLED model. If you're only ever gonna play in portable mode, $200 for the Switch Lite is a pretty damn good deal. If you have a launch Nintendo Switch and it's getting a little beat up, this, this maybe might be worth considering. I might have gone for this if I still had my original launch. If they happen to release any special edition versions, then that might get a little more tempting. Anyway, what do you guys think about the new Nintendo Switch OLED model? Is this something that you've been looking forward to? I hope to spend a lot more time on it in, in the next week or so. I have something planned. I'm gonna put this thing through its paces and see how it stacks up. And I intend on getting the white one uh, when it actually officially launches. Of course, I mostly play in docked mode because when I play games, I'm usually streaming them over on twitch.tv slash wolfden. So if you have any questions about this thing, go over there when I'm live one day and ask away and I'll uh, try to demo it for you live right there. Anyway, thank you guys for watching all this. Stay tuned for more about this. Of course, the most important things that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here so you know when I post new videos to gonna be posting about this real soon and share this video with a friend a friend who might be interested in this or who you think needs an upgrade 
Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good week.